Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com, and today uh, we're going to create this kind of bendy, kind of lettery thing. I don't know exactly what the heck this is, but it's kind of, I've been uh, looking at a lot of really cool Scandinavian type of 3D designs, and basically when I say Scandinavian, I think of like Ikea. Uh, so we have like very bright, uh, solid colors and 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 clean design and then you always have like some kind of wood <laughs> texture in there so i've just kind of i've been really digging that style and seeing it a lot lately and I, and I wanted to do something with it uh and i came up with this little composition where we have uh basically a little bendy letter just a little tube tubey guy in there for no reason whatsoever uh but then i i thought of an idea to have to make this so when this bends, the letter bends out, it's solid on one end, and then you can see through it on the other. So, uh, you know, pretty simple thing, but I'm just going to set up everything, how I made this, how I lit it, how I textured it to get this wood texture, uh, and all that good stuff. So, let me just go ahead and I'll start a new composition here. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is create... Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to create my letter. So uh, let's do A again. A. And we'll make this I think the typeface I used was a rounded one. And I believe this typeface, if I can find it again, I think it was VAG rounded, VAG rounded uh, ST uh, standard and I think this is in if you have Adobe Creative Cloud I believe this is in the the font kit uh, in the assets or where is that stuff where's all that stuff so the fonts I believe you can find it there maybe not but if not I think it was a free I think it was a free font so if you want to find that go do the Googles on that uh, but I like this because it's nice and rounded. Uh, so here's my text object. And what I'm going to do is throw this and do an extrude. And basically right now I'm just going to create the main uh, solid part of my letter. And what I'm going to do is to make this more hollow, I'm going to have the start cap have no cap at all so we can see right through it. So now what I can do is start creating those thin uh, panels that kind of bend forward. So to do that, uh, I'm going to actually make this more of a very straight, uh, straightforward, seamless kind of workflow. So what I mean by that is I'm going to make sure that I, if I want to be able to iterate and change this to any letter that it'll just change the entire composition so I don't have to keep change multiple objects. So what I'm going to do is instead of creating a whole new text object, what I'm going to do is just create an instance object that's going to reference that text object. So that's going to create this new text one. And now with this, I can go ahead and just, you know, add an extrude to that and just make this, uh, just make this a thin panel here. And this will be uh, piece one. <laughs> Getting very creative with the names here. This can be base. Base and one. And uh, now what we can do is we need to bend this, right? So we're going to get our aptly named Bend Deformer. And to make this work, we're going to need to group these together. So the bend deformer is on the same level of hierarchy as our extrude object here. And uh, let's see. My, my theory is that the bend deformer never bends the way you want it to by default. And I'm right again. I, I've never been proved wrong <laughs> so far with this. So uh, let's see. We need to, let's just bend this a little bit. And I think all we need to do is just rotate this 90. And there we go. Okay, got it bending the right direction, but you can see that we got some issues. We got some problems. 
Well, the first thing is that I want to keep the y-axis length. I don't want it to kind of increase in length. But you'll notice that we have this jinkiness happening. And if I go into my lines, let's see. My, well, I guess you can't really see it. Isoparm, nope. Basically what's happening here is if I turn off the fong, you can see how this is kind of dividing this up. And this is all based on actually the instance here of this angle. You can see as I adjust this, it's kind of trying to smooth things out. So it's the intermediate points uh, to smooth this all out. Uh, what we're going to need to do, and again, I'm in the base text because I'm using that text instance. So I'm going to need to change this, uh, this first original text object spline. So to even this out, and I go over this in a few other tutorials, to make this kind of more uniform, you can either do uniform, and that creates uh, you know, a smooth surface, but it sometimes creates way too many points. Like we don't need all that point, uh, all that amount of points. And just a more efficient way of doing it is doing uh, subdivided intermediate points. And what you can do by that is you can you can increase, you can create intermediate points depending on two variables: the angle between two points or the actual length between two points. So you kind of get the benefits of adaptive and uniform all in one. So I just like to use subdivide. I'm sure we probably could have just gotten by with uniform, but hey. So there we go. We now have a more smooth uh, object here. Let me just turn on the long angle again. Way more smooth. Probably bring this down even more. Even see on the lines here, we're being pretty efficient with not creating too, too much geometry here. So there is our first like peel, little onion peel kind of thing. And I'll just make this skinnier just because I like to see this kind of fit. I think if I can fit, uh, fit the parent, I think that screwed that up. So I need to move this up again and maybe make this a little taller. And there we go, there's our first on a bend, move this up. And uh, so there's our first bend, and this can be bend, bend one. And then I'll just duplicate this. And again, we still have that text instance, so it's referencing that first text object. And uh, then I'm, all I'm gonna do is just make this bend a little bit more. Actually, I'm gonna make uh, let's see, that's this one, bend one, and I'm gonna make a, a I'm gonna make another one that just kind of is bending just ever so slightly that you can kind of see inside the main text object here. So now I gotta rename everything because now I'm all out of whack. So this is bend part three, this is bend one, this is the first bend, and then uh, this is bend two. I'm just going to order this correctly so I can make sense of it all. So what I so what I'm going to do is make this first one bend bend extreme like have an extreme angle here. Cool. And uh actually you can still see that we have some issues. And uh the reason why this is is because we kind of added more points to the text spline itself. Uh, but not enough information on the actual surface. So we need to go back into our text object, uh, or actually our, our uh, extrude objects here. And uh, we need to, because the, the, the extrude objects actually create in this geometry, creating those polygons. What we need to do is change the type of cap uh, geometry to something that we can actually uh, apply a grid to. So I'm going to use quadrangle. And if I turn on regular grid, and uh, you're not going to actually see anything because I need to go into all of these pieces and actually do it there. Actually, I don't even need to kind of do anything uh, with this main part because we're not bending it. 
But if I go into all these other extrudes uh, and go into quadrangle and turn on regular grid, you're going to see that we don't have that jankiness anymore. So let me just turn that off. You can see all the weird uh, distortions and, and glitches. I'm going to turn that on. If I go into... where I can get the lines. I think I need to make it editable. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you can see what's going on is it's making a grid and slicing my geometry into all these pieces. So it does kind of create a heavy piece of geometry here, uh, but it's necessary when we have this kind of bending going on. Now we have the smooth bend, and again, before and after, and see what's going on. Uh, so what I like to do, and a rule of thumb I like to stick with, is to match the minimum length uh, to so the, the 5 centimeters. I like to use that same number with the width. So I'll just put 5 in there as well. And you can see that it tries to make a solid, nice, uniform grid uh, in on your extrudes here. So now... We got some nice bending, we have our geometry looking nice, nice and smooth. In fact, we can actually probably go even further because we have some chunky geometry still. So we can go in here and just kind of decrease the maximum length. And uh, I don't even know if I want to really make this even more dense because of the, uh, just how dense that mesh is, but I think we'll be okay. So that's looking good. We'll go out of our wireframe mode just go to our, back to our normal shading so uh, the last thing we need to do in this scene is first uh, well actually two last things so I guess it's not last <laughs> so we'll make a four and uh, need to go in make sure our letters are not kind of intersecting here go in here just move it up slightly. Now we should be resting right on the floor. There, looking good. And uh, let's see. So we got our floor. The last thing we need to add, this is the last, last thing. Last thing we need to add as far as geometry is, and this a little bit more, is uh, our little tube that's inside there. That's in there for no reason whatsoever, but you know, hey, I like to add a little detail. So uh, let's go in here and we're going to create a spline. Basically, this is just going to be a spline that just kind of follows the uh, contour, not the contour, I guess like the inner shape of the letter A here. I'm going to create this really quick. And something like this, kind of like a neon light if this was, had like a neon light inside of it. Make this soft here. Oh, lost it. Go. Something like that. Cool, so now that's our little spline. And the next thing we can do is just sweep this with a circle. Get our sweep object. We're gonna place the circle in there because we're gonna sweep the circle, shrink that down, sweep it along this spline. Still way too fat. Something like that. And we're gonna make sure this is kind of back here in our object and really if we want to let's let's uh, do a little remix here and let's make two of these i'm going to duplicate this sweep what i'm going to do with this spline go in here go to mesh a spline and we'll create an outline so basically you can see as i'm pushing this in and out kind of just uh, making a second spline that's on the outside i can Actually, I need to undo that, and I need to actually make sure I do create new object because that was just kind of creating an outline with our existing spline. But what I can do is make uh, do a little create outline there, and maybe do one more. 
like that's kind of inner. Go back to our original spline and make it inside. Actually, nah, let's just do the two. Let's just do So now we kind of got two splines in here instead of the one. Actually, did an inner thing as well. See the inner spline. So let's, all right, that actually looks all right. So let's go put that spline in there. So now we have three, three little sweeps in there instead of just the one. Actually, it's kind of two. They're not very, they're not spaced very evenly. So let's go back into create outlines. Let's do create new object and let's just push this create new object and push this out just a tiny bit, just so we can even out the spacing. Uh, which one was which? Spline one, two, let's do spline one. I think that was the new one that we made. Okay, and that's a little bit more spaced out evenly. It's not perfect, but it'll do. All right, so now we got three sweep objects inside there. We can actually shrink down the circles here. Maybe make it two. We have like this neon light kind of thingy in there. All right, so now we can start texturing and lighting stuff. Close up our sweeps here. At our base text, let's create some like plasticky materials. Get uh, kind of bluish material. This will just be blue. Heal. Uh, we'll go to reflections. Let's add a uh, Beckman reflection. Make that uh, add on top of our specular, and we'll make that add on top of our color channel. Uh, we can change the specular color, or the actually uh, the reflection color a little bit here, and uh, let's actually just apply this to all of our objects here. Both our <clears throat> our base text and all of our little onion skin pieces here. And let's go into inact interactive render region. Say that five times fast. And uh, we got some nice reflections. I'm going to go to Fresnel and I'm going to change the preset from custom to plexiglass because I want this to look kind of plasticky. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the specular strength for our reflection. I can actually maybe bring down the strength a little bit of the uh, Fresnel. Okay. And in the specular, let's make this a little sharper spec. And like this, we can even give this light hue too if we want. All right, but right now we're really not reflecting anything in the scene other than the objects themselves. So what I'm going to do is go and grab my GSG HDRI Studio. And the first thing I'm going to do is go in here and turn off floor in the background because I don't need those. And uh, you can see we have a little bit of reflections happening because of the, the HDR file we have applied by default. What I'm going to do is go into my, uh, my browser here. And I liked the, uh, in the collections here, some of the actual images, the HDR images in here. And I think, uh, which one did I like? I which one I liked. Uh, let's do... Do a roller rink because that's always fun. There we go. Do the roller rink, and we can always come back and kind of see what this looks like with other HDRI images. But we'll we'll just use this as a jumping off point. So uh, the next thing we need to do is let's make our floor texture. Uh, and what I'm going to do is make this kind of a wood, a light wood color. And what I'm going to do is make a layer shader and go into my shader and use a couple noises. And the first noise I'm gonna use, I think is gonna be a stuple. And what I'm gonna do is make this kind of look like wood grain by making the relative scale in the X 2000, so very, very long. And let's apply this to 
our floor. Let's see what that looks like. So we can see it's a little bit of a wood grain. I'm gonna crank up the octaves to give it a little bit more detail in that noise. And maybe adjust uh, the cycles a little bit here too. Just playing around seeing what all this stuff looks like. Uh, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, and we can actually double up on uh, these noises by creating another noise and maybe making this a different kind of noise. So maybe Luca. And again, gonna make these very long. So this kind of looks kind of woody. And maybe adjust the clips here. Make a little bit more contrasty. And then what I'm gonna do is go into my layer shader and just do like a multiply. Or we can do an overlay and kind of see how that's looking. See what looks kind of more woody and others. Uh, and then we can colorize this to so it's not just black and white. Let's colorize it. And I'm just gonna create two knots here. And let's make this like a light yellow. Maybe light like a light tan and make this more of like a cream kind of color creamy tan what that looks like make this a little brighter right now I feel like I'm losing some detail Maybe multiply that. There we go. Now we got a little bit more of that grain detail in there. And what I can do is I can always add this to a main color here and maybe make this bluish kind of hue overall. Something like this. That looks kind of good. Or I can make this yellowish. So we can, all we're doing is taking that original noise stuff and just adding it on top of whatever color, just kind of applying that blending mode here. We can go even one further and uh, add some more just uh, subtle grain to this. Maybe some like just small noise. And again, the blending mode here. What this is gonna do is just make this a little bit more organic. Maybe do cranial. I don't know. I'm just kind of playing around like Booyah because Booyah is just fun to say. Uh, so something like that. So we just add some more graininess, just some subtle stuff going on here. And maybe we reduce the contrast so it's a little bit more gray values and not so extreme. And it's very subtle, like I said, but hey. Uh, so now what we can do is take this color uh, noise stuff we made, copy it, go into our bump, and just use this as a slight bump. So we're just going to do like maybe 3%. And we can go into our layer shader again, and that colorize, we can then make this more grayscale because bump just looks at grayscale values to determine the bump. We got a slight kind of bump going on, very subtle. Uh, we can change our reflectance, maybe make this a little bit shinier, the sharper specular. And really, we're not gonna see exactly what this looks like until we add some lights. Uh, but let's go and add a little bit of reflection here too. A little bit of for now. Uh, and for this, we can do plexiglass again, cause like this could be like a waxy kind of coating maybe. And this is just going to be very subtle. You can already see our HDRI image kind of being reflected here. Always good. So let's make this additive on top of our specular. That's liking that so far. We can always come back to this once we actually light it. Uh, but I'm just going to duplicate this blue texture, make it yellow, and I'm going to just uh, put a material on these sweep objects here. Boop, boop, boop. And go in here and just change this more yellow ish, orange ish color. I'm going to add a little bit of luminance here, just, uh, just a little bit. And 
since I changed the hue of the specular, I'm going to go and make this a little bit more reddish, orangish. And the same thing with the reflection color. Cool. All right. So we got that. I'm actually going to go and apply the uh, the glassy see-through transparent texture later. I'm going to start lighting stuff now just so I can kind of see what I have here with these textures so far. So I'm going to create an area light. Push this up. Move this over here. Like so. And just angle it down. This will be like my main light. Rename it main light. And uh, let's turn on shadows for this. I'm going to turn on area shadows and do something like this. Just trying to optimize this. Actually, what I want to do is make sure I go into my render settings, go into physical. We always like the look of physical kind of renders. And again, we can rotate this around, make sure our shadow's facing the right direction that we want it to. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is go and add a light fall off so this is a little bit more realistic. Go something like this. I think what I want to do next, you can see that rain or the uh, shadows kind of kind of a bit much and it's blown down my computer but we'll we'll deal with that uh, and right now this is very hot very hot light i'm just going to turn down the intensity here maybe give it a little bit of a yellowish hue very slight and you can see that my scene is still pretty dark. We can do, we can add a little bit of like a fill light in here that's built into the HDRI Studio controls and give this like a fill of 25. So this is going to cast like an ambient light to our scene. We can make this a little bit blue, just very slightly blue. And let's see. So we have one light in here. Let's create. Another light, I don't want it to have a shadow. I'm gonna turn it off. And this is just gonna be like a rim light. And I'm just gonna place this right behind uh, my, my object. How that looks. While that's kinda doing that, I think the next thing I wanna do is bring in my camera. And in my original image, I used an isometric render or isometric camera. Actually, I think what I want to do, whoa, that's a hot light. That's a hot light too. I'm going to move this up. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. I'm going to rename this my rim light. There we go. We move this main light up a little bit. I think what I want to do is just, okay, let's sped it up a little bit. Okay. That's still pretty hot move it up even more turn down this intensity here a rim light back a little really it's that it's that shadow that's really really killing me right now the render times what i'm going to do for now is just go into my physical render settings here and just turn down my shading and my shadow just for now and i just need to remember to crank all these values up once i'm ready to render uh, so the last thing i'm going to do is just add an overhead light so i'm going to duplicate my rim light overhead rename this overhead light and uh reposition this overhead my scene, my little objects here, just slightly in front. And again, I'm going to probably want to bring down the strength a little bit here, like so. Go and grab our camera. Again, I, I said that I used an isometric view, so I'm going to do that. 
whoops, screwed up because I had this connected to this view, I think. Yep. Ball camera and then here, perspective. Okay, let's do parallel. And you can see that my image is getting cut off and that's because my camera is so close and it has a front clipping enabled or near clipping enable and that basically just clips your image if it's if your camera's too close to it. So you can see we're just like cutting through my object here. So I just need to pull out my camera and zoom in. <clears throat> now we got a really nice isometric kind of view. Always love the isometric view, aka SimCity view. So now this is looking pretty good. The lighting I think is still pretty hot on my main light. Move this up a little bit, maybe move up the overhead light, adjust the uh, fall off here because we don't want it to be too like overexposed. That looks a lot better. Looking a lot better. Move rim light closer ever so slightly and wait for it. Okay. Now let's let's kind of finish this guy off and add our transparent parts to this object. First let's let's just save this room. Bendy letters. And uh basically it was really simple of how I did this. I'm just gonna recreate uh the transparent material. Turn off the color channel. Uh, go into transparency, turn that on, and let's apply this to our object. So uh, this will be applied to all these pieces. Uh, duplicate the glass material on top of here. And basically what that's gonna do is turn everything into glass. And there's no refraction or anything, so you can see right through it. What I'm going to do is just go and use the uh, glass refraction preset just so we can see a little bit of this refraction distortion happening. So we got a little bit of coolness going on already. <clears throat> but what we need to do is make this so that the refraction or the transparency is only on one side. So I believe if I think the, the actual face we want to have the transparent stuff on is the back side of our extrude. So I'm going to go to side here and make sure that this is just the, these uh, transparent materials are just applied to the back of our objects. And I think I did that wrong. Yep. Maybe this is the front. And then the blue material will be the back. Let's see if that's right. I think I had them switched. All right. So now you can see the, this other side of our A has the transparent material. And as I move this forward, and I can actually bend this little piece forward as well, you can see that it's like this really cool effect where you can see the actual material here. Like right down here, you can see that blue material, but as it bends, you can see right through everything. And it has this really cool effect. Uh, and what I wanna do, is make my transparent material a little bit more sexy. So what I can do is I can mess around with the refraction value here. You can see what kind of distortions you get. So this is kind of cool that you get some of the uh, actual letters being distorted in here. Uh, we can make that additive. We can go into our specular here and make this a very sharp kind of specular. What that looks like. That. So what I want is a nice hot, uh, nice hot uh, specular highlight on some of the sides of the transparent material here. What I might do is change this to like Fong because Fong is like super sharp, super sharp uh, kind of specular. That looks like. 
Now you can see we have this really nice glint hot specular on there. We can actually go into the transparency on our reflectance and we have a default reflection strength. We can crank that up and see more of our HDR reflected or basically refracted through our transparent material here. So we can actually go, and again, a lot of this, of how this glass looks is gonna be dependent on your, ref your refraction value here. And also, since it's reflecting and refracting everything in the scene, uh, it's also gonna depend on the HDR that you choose. So we can choose the 360 HDRI tutorial to see what that looks like. It has a little bit less detail. Let's try this one. Uh, let's go through all these. Uh, do the old barn. Hope I, I hope that's not the one I already used. I think that's the one I already used. Okay. Maybe. Oh, let's do the roller roller sn roller rink snack bar. That looks like. We can actually go into here, into our HDR studio, where we can crank up the brightness of the reflection. That, that looks like. Now we're seeing a lot more of the HDR coming in through here. What I want to do is make my color a little lighter, make a sharper specular. Crank that up. Whoops. Do it out. There we go. So sharp specular. Again, we can we can turn down the strength of the for now so more of the reflection will kind of come through. So we're seeing a little bit more of that. Maybe a little bit too much though. <clears throat> uh the yellow again we can crank up brightness. And crank up the brightness of a color panel. Bring in more reflection there. And uh, I think right now our lighting is pretty, f pretty flat uh, as I'm seeing it right now. So decrease the Decrease the fall off. Move this closer. Basically, I want I want more contrast here. The overhead light shrink this. I want the lighting to be so dang flat in the scene. All right, I can already tell that this is looking a lot better because we have darker area over here and some highlighted or spotlighted over here and just uh, refocus my main light this so okay a little closer Computer go fast, much faster. We have some highlights here. Actually, that's pretty, that's a little bit hot. Rim light back here, fill in some back area here. Uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Uh, we can, again, I think depending on how you have your lights in your scene and stuff like that, we need to probably go back into our glass and maybe lessen the specular sh strength here because the, you can see how blown out that specular is right here. Uh, but it's nice to have that like really cool glint though added to that. Again, you can also, I already, cr I, all, I cranked up the reflection strength here as well, so. Bring that down a little bit too. You can always play around with the refraction and that'll kind of make everything 
change a little bit too. All right. So you basically can see what's going on. And again, we have a lot of the grain in there that's making this not look so sexy <laughs> right now. But again, that's all because I want to be able to do this tutorial without waiting forever for render updates. Uh, but the one thing I want to do is just to really make this more apparent that uh, the glass is on one side and the uh, blue textures on the other is uh, I just want to brighten this up. I want to uh, kind of adjust the bend, uh, the bend angles here. So let's go into our bend deformer and and uh, do it like this. Just rotate it a little bit. You can see. A little bit more. little forward more so you can really tell that the glass material is just on that one side so I'm just kind of angling this ever so slightly more and maybe down a little bit in this this is really gonna accentuate how this whole scenes working so Actually, this first bend, I'm going to move this forward a little bit. Again, kind of angle this, this side. The one angle is going to be, one side is going to be bent a little bit more. It's uh, left side and some less. All right, so let's see what that looks like. <clears throat> let's look at nicer. Uh, again, this this transparent material we're kind of seeing through pretty good. Um, and we can always change the refraction here and see if we can mess around with that much more. Well, I can just fart around with the lighting forever, but I'm not going to bore you guys with that. So... Gonna see how this looks. That's looking much better. We've got this really nice. You can definitely tell that you know we're actually seeing through all this, and uh, I think it's a really really cool effect uh, to have going on here. So what I'm gonna do to kind of finalize this is uh, let's go. Uh, ba -ba -ba, let's add our ambient occlusion to our scene, and what I'm gonna do is just bring this down to like 50. And make this a lighter color, maybe a little bit bluish. And it's uh, a little bit more nice detail. Again, I'm going to go in here and let's just say that this is done. And we're going to render this bad boy. We're going to just crank up all of our values. And really, this is all very much dependent on um what your scene is so we can even have the shading transparency check because we have some transparency in here uh, and that'll kind of check you make sure the the transparency looks good with all the shading and, and stuff in the scene and already you can see that this is i have this purposefully in this top right window or top left window over here just so it's a little bit faster to render uh, you can see with the ambient occlusion and the shading of of the shadow there, everything's looking pretty pretty nice, pretty nice. So again, I could probably do with uh, adding more reflection through that refraction on our glass, and again, we can totally make this look different by kind of changing the HDRI too. But yeah. So play around with that. Uh, oh, and one final thing. Because of the fact, other than the sweeps here, because of the fact we have everything linked to this main text object and we want to do a different letter, say G, e, put in a different G, put in a different letter. Let's turn off these sweeps. Those sweeps aren't going to update correctly. 
wait for it. Actually, should have turned down those values again with the physical renderer. Go and we're cranking, we're cranking. So that's the nice thing of, you know, if you wanted to really iterate a lot of these, because we're using the instances, we just have to change that one text object and it'll update all of our bendy. Slowly cranking here, slowly cranking here. Boy, do I need Octane. I need Octane pretty bad. Um, but yeah, always in your scene, it's always a good rule of thumb to try to use instances where you can, especially, like I said, if you're doing a bunch of iteration. Um, even the only thing that doesn't really update with the whole composition I set up is those original sweeps, uh, those little neon light looking things. Um, and really there's, you just have to manually go in there and readapt those shapes in there. And I'm tired of waiting. So <laughs> let's, let's turn off the, let's bring down all these values here. I just want to see what that looks like. That new G updated. Go, go, go. All right, it's cranking. It's cranking now. Again, so if you wanted to do like your, I know the, the there's a big uh, Instagram thing called three, six days of type. Uh, so you can easily, you know, create a whole bunch of type doing this. So there's our G looking good. So you can always play around with, again, you can change the different uh, fonts, the actual letters itself. Uh, and all this fun stuff with this kind of very non-destructive kind of workflow. So now it's kind of updating faster. So the one thing you can do, you can see that we can see right through here, and it's very hard to tell that it's glass. We can, you know, if we have that issue, you know, sometimes the camera angle and stuff is not very conducive to uh, having some really nice refractions that really lets that uh, glass pop. We all, always go into the transparency here and just turn down the brightness a little bit so it's going to kind of darken that piece of transparency. Uh, and we can also go into this absorption distance and kind of change this to a, a dark, slightly darker color. So this is giving it a slightly blue hue. So just keep that in mind with this to try to help this, uh, that transparency really pop through and that you can actually tell that that's a see-through. All right. So that will be it for me. We we made our text. We made our bendy text pieces. We learned how to uh, have one texture on one side of an object and one on the other. So we have the uh, plastic texture on one side of this letter and the um, glass transparent part on the other. And that you know creates a little fun effect like this. Um, and then we use the HR studio to add some nice reflections. We use some noise to create this nice wood texture as well. Um, yeah, so hopefully you got, if you guys make anything with this, make your letters or make your whatever shapes with your little onion skin folding, uh, and bendy stuff, I would love to see it. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to post them in the comments section. And as always, thank you. So much for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye everybody.